Respected Chief Guest, Professor Bandata, Guest of Honor, Mr. Satyaji Tussam, and President of this today's inaugural function, you Navokeshwar, learned uh, persons from different parts of India, and my dear friends. I once again welcome you all to this today's national seminar on singularity of India, integration, homogenization, and precision. Let me begin my keynote address with a story that circulated during my uh, stay in Zenio, which captures the racist attributes of India. So the story goes like this. India is a land of the Gangetic barbarians. It's a land of the Sanskritized monkeys, monkeys of South India. And it's a land of Zanglis and Chinkis of the Northeast India. I leave it to the learned audience to be amused or be amused about this uh, anecdote, which again recaptures the racial attributes of India. On 5th of May 2007, the United Nations Committee on Elimination of Racial Discrimination, sir, in its concluding observations of the periodic report submitted by India, uh, noted with concern two issues related with Manipur or the Northeast India. The first issue is the third committee noted with concern that in spite of the recommendations that was given by the review committee in 2005 on AFASPA, that is the, the Jivan Reddy Committee, to repeal the Armed Forces Special Power Act or to replace it with a human law, India has so far failed to implement the recommendations. And the second issue is the committee noted with concern about various developmental projects for example, the issue of Tipaimuk Dam and the other dams that were to be constructed in the lower portion of Arunachal Pradesh and in different parts of India, especially in the Naxal afflicted areas of India, Jharkhand, Orissa, and the parts of Andhra Pradesh, about the mining of mineral oils and the extraction of oil and petroleum uh, products. So these were the two issues that the CERT noted with concern and requested the ambassador of India to the permanent representative of the United Nations to give a information on these recommendations or requests. After that, starting from 2009, two chairpersons for different time periods sent special communiques to the ambassador of India, Atechi, that is the permanent body of the United Nations, regarding the same issues of what is going on in the Northeast India. The first one was the chairperson of SIR, that is the Committee on Elimination of Racial Discrimination, Binamata, and the second one was the uh, chairperson of the same committee, that is Anwar Kemal. So two of these chairpersons repeatedly sent requests or special communiques to the ambassador of India or to the Indian state to explicate on what is going on in the Northeast India. So these incidences I mentioned to capture the kind of understanding that the international bodies like United Nations has about the implications of racist practices or racism in India. Some theory says that what is happening in India in this integration mode is, first of all, happened during the freedom struggle. The freedom strugglers or the elites of those who were leading the freedom struggle against colonial British saw the necessity of having a territoriality of India for the materiality that we have to have a nation state 
for the resources to be exploited. So that was the integration mode. India needed land. India needed land in the northeast. India needed land of the Adivasis. India needed lands of the Dalits and the minorities. What for? These lands were important for the resources, the materiality, which should be exploited for the benefits of the elites. And it's a continuing practice. Although the freedom struggles of India against the British, they condemned the racial practices of the colony of British. After the freedom struggle, when India gained independence, a kind of internal link colonialism continues to be happening in India. That's why, first of all, India implements black laws like the Armed Forces Peace Power Act and the other black laws in different parts of India for exploitation and for domination. And in the words of Hannah Arendt, these are practices like calling these people within India the internal enemies or the objective enemies because they happen to belong to such a time period, to such a time scale. And then at the same time, the contradictory notion of the Indian state is that, first of all, people inhabiting such areas are aliens. They are like foreigners. That's why they need to be suppressed, they need to be dominated. And at the same time, like the colonial practices, the resources of these people should be exploited. We have a renowned Dalit scholar, Amit Az, from whom I have quoted such theories. We have a G. Alicius, a Dalit scholar, and whose theories on the racial practice of India, which he shall be sharing in detail further in this two days deliberation. So India, in this integration mode, talks about a singularity. There has to be a single citizenship. There has to be a single law. And that your affiliation to the Indian nation state has to be singular. Memories of the communities, memories of you know, certain ethnosis cannot be given any kind of predominances. Mm. The moment you do it, you will be called an enemy within it. So these are the practices we are witnessing today Although in the post-independence era of India, India has promised to uphold the liberal ethos, the democratic values, etc., 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 in the name of social justice. But what we are witnessing today, not only in the northeast part of India, but in the areas where there are the Adivasis, where there are the Dalits, etc., this exploitation, domination, and subjugation goes on. The main purpose of we are organizing this seminar is to deliberate on the modalities of the integration, the practices of harmonization, both on the cultural and the socio-economic plane, as well as in the policy implementations, and how it is affecting our life. And the second main objective of the seminar is to gather from the participants to redefine what integration really means to redefine what singularity of India really means and what are the different forms of racial discrimination we are facing today. After we do so, we hope to circulate the proceedings of the seminar to the larger communities at the international level, to the concerned government bodies of India and others, and then have, have a platform so as to move our agenda and to demand for a dignified existence is different from the kind of wretched existence we are having today. With these few words, I welcome you once again, and thank you all for coming all the way from Chennai, from Hyderabad, from Kashmir, from Delhi, and from Chandel, from Tamil Nadu, from Meghalaya, from Arunachal Pradesh, and then from different parts of India. And um, we really meet in this gathering, Naga scholars and activists, because of their engagement, who had to you know, call up at the last moment. I remember them in my keynote address, especially Kakadi Iralu, who had promised to build up a positive relationship between Manipuris and the Nagas for a better Nordic India. Thank you all. Thank you.